If you need to do any kind of health science research, you should run a search in the Cochrane Library, as they have some of the most highly sought after research, meta analyses, and systematic reviews. The Cochrane Library isn't just a great database to search for systematic reviews, it's a living history of the evidence based practice movement. The Cochrane Library started as an idea of Archie Cochrane, a British medical researcher in the early 70s. He published this book where he stated that healthcare should be based on interventions which have been proven to be effective, and that healthcare providers should be using the evidence found in randomized control trials to make clinical decisions. This hopefully sounds sensible to you, but it was sort of revolutionary back in the 70s. Providers based their decisions on what they had learned in school or by what had always been done. Plus, it was much harder to locate all the critical evidence. Cochrane led an international collaboration to develop a clearinghouse of perinatal research in the 1980s, and the official Cochrane collaboration was founded in 1993. The goal was to put together research, evaluate it, and make it easier for clinicians to find and use. And that's what they're still doing today. Now this slide is not going to help you search the Cochrane database more effectively, but it will make you super interesting at parties where the topic of systematic reviews comes up. Also, it's a crash course in reading this diagram, which is known as a forest plot. You see forest plots a lot in systematic reviews and meta-analyses. A forest plot is used because it's a nice visual representation of what a statistical aggregation of the studies looks like. This is a forest plot of seven randomized control trials ranging from the early 70s to the 1980s on administering corticosteroids to mothers about to have their babies before term. Each horizontal line in the plot represents a single study. The vertical line is called the line of no effect. Anything to the right of the line favors the control. Anything to the left of the line favors the experimental intervention. The horizontal lines represent the strength of the studies. The shorter the line, the stronger the study. The diamond is the statistical average of all the studies. If it falls on the left of the line of no effect, that means the therapy is beneficial. If the diamond falls on the right, it means that the therapy is harmful. If the diamond touches the line of no effect, there's no significant difference found. This diamond is clearly on the side that favors the experimental. In this case, it means that giving a mother steroids before they give birth to a preterm baby is beneficial. These studies existed for almost 20 years before someone put them all together and saw that this is a treatment that should be standard practice. If someone had done this earlier, who knows how many preemies could have been helped. This is the power of systematic reviews. The Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews has more than 8,000 records, and this is generally what people are talking about when they refer to Cochrane. It's the source for systematic reviews and meta-analyses in healthcare. These include full reviews which are carried out by a team of researchers who are supervised by a Cochrane editorial team. Okay, now let's get searching in Cochrane. To get to the Cochrane Database, you start at the ISU Library's homepage. You can click on the Idaho Health Sciences Library link, and then click on Cochrane Library. Cochrane is pretty easy to search and navigate. The basic search box is up at the top. You can do a basic or advanced search. Clicking the Advanced Search button will bring you to the advanced search form. I like to use the advanced search form so I can enter multiple keyword synonyms and word variants using the OR operator to broaden my searches and find more results. Even if you don't use OR operators, keep in mind that the Cochrane Library is a lot smaller than the other ISU library databases, so you can make your searches broader because you probably won't be overwhelmed by the number of results. Before searching, let's go to the Cochrane Library homepage and learn some more about the options. There's a lot going on here on their homepage, and some of it is actually pretty interesting. Clicking on Cochrane Reviews, and then choosing Browse Reviews, 
can help suggest some options if you've not yet narrowed in on a research topic. Maybe you're only interested in neonatal care, so you can just click on the neonatal care link and see which systematic reviews are under that category. Now let's try a search. I'm going to start with a really basic search. To start, I kind of want to get a feel for what all has been published in Cochrane on the topic of measles. I'm really interested in the MMR vaccine, but I'm going to start with a broader search on just measles. There's a lot on this page, so let's go through the search results. Cochrane reviews come up first. These are the high quality systematic reviews we've been talking about. You can see the next tab is named Cochrane Protocols. A protocol is the process that will be undertaken in order to complete a systematic review. These can be helpful as they sometimes include a summary of the topic and some good references. The next tab is called Trials. These will be papers describing individual randomized controlled trials and they are drawn from a database called the Cochrane Central Register of Controlled Trials, or CENTRAL. Remember that you can also find RCTs in other databases, such as PubMed, CINAHL, and other library databases, so while these results can be useful, most of them are not unique to the Cochrane Library. However, this tab may also have some unpublished RCTs as well. The Editorials tab contains editorials written by professionals associated with the Cochrane Library. Next is Cochrane Special Collections. These are hand-curated lists of reviews specific to a hot topic in medicine. There will usually be zero results in this tab, but if you are looking for background information on a general topic that happens to be the subject of a special collection, these may be helpful. The Clinical Answers tab contains Cochrane publications that are designed to give quick answers to providers at the point of care. Rather than having to wade through complicated systematic reviews, these clinical answers are short publications that allow healthcare professionals to get to the bottom line quickly and make a decision about patient care. The final tab is called Other Reviews and will present systematic reviews that are done by organizations other than Cochrane. These reviews are pulled into the Cochrane Library search results from a different database called Epistemonikos. Now let's revert to our measles search to look at a Cochrane review more closely. I was focused on the vaccine for measles, mumps, and rubella, and here's a result right here. Now, when looking at a Cochrane review, you can jump right into the PDF. That's up here, but I like to look first through the abstract before pulling up the entire document. It gives you an overview of the topic, where the author searched, their inclusion criteria, and what they found in their conclusions. The two parts of the abstract that I look at most closely are generally the main results section and the plain language summary. In the main results section, the first paragraph is usually the most telling. In this case, it tells me how many studies they included in their systematic review. That's a lot of randomized controlled trials, cohort studies, and case control studies and so on, but look at how many participants were involved when they pooled all of those studies together. Over 14 million children were involved in the studies they covered. That's a really big N. I also like the plain language summary, as it condenses the review into something that's easy to read. Sometimes that's all I want. If you think the review looks worthwhile after going through the abstract, you can go ahead and click on View PDF. A Cochrane review is generally anywhere from about 70 to 120 pages in length. This is a really big study, so it's actually 160 pages in length. Don't despair, you don't have to read every bit of it. The first 20 to 30 pages are usually all you'll need to go through, but you can certainly look at the data analysis if you're curious to see how the review was done. Now we've switched to a different review. Chondroitin for osteoarthritis. One nice feature of the Cochrane Review page is that you can jump right to the figures and tables. Recognize this from the forest plot? Now I haven't even read one word of the systematic review, but looking at the side that the diamond is on in this forest plot, I can clearly see that it favors the intervention. 
which in this case is giving chondroitin plus glucosamine to osteoarthritis patients. Not all of the Cochrane systematic reviews include forest plots. Generally, it's just for the meta-analyses. But it's so lovely when they do, especially now that you know how to read them. Now, Cochrane isn't perfect. It usually just focuses on interventions, and it's really weak on qualitative studies. But they are starting to expand, so stay tuned for more in those areas. Even so, if you're doing any kind of research, make sure you search Cochrane, because this is the cream of the evidence crop.